Hello, hello, hello everyone. Dr. Lalade here at Ask the Gynecologist and tonight I'm here with you. I want to say welcome to this new week and uh, uh, I want to wish you the best of this week. It's a wonderful week and the um, and everything is sh shaping up and uh, this weekend is the Ovulation Clomid IVF Seminar and if you're not yet registered for this seminar i think it's time for you to ensure that you click the links and get registered for the seminar once again i want to introduce myself to you my name is dr baba jilalade one of your admins at ask the gynecologist and tonight i'll be talking about how ectopic pregnancy causes infertility so if you're free once again join me i know it's a long weekend i should have been on here live over the weekend but so many things to do work and all that i couldn't make it up this weekend so I think we need to start a week on a fresh note and uh, obviously we'll be talking about how ectopic pregnancy affects infertility. Elizabeth Imolea, your good evening. Ezon Yoku Lilian Amarachuku, welcome. New Arrivals 1 on Instagram, official Lomi Erons and BJ Pumping. <clears throat> My precious uh, couture, Basega Tafalanyo, floral, floral perfumery. And uh, good evening, everyone. Flora Perfumery, good evening, boss. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So we are recording simultaneously, broadcasting on Instagram and on Facebook here. And I can see Christina Ladumoy as well. She's here. And Ade Falake, Kayode, Onikuide, Ifenyuwa, Judith. And thank you guys for being here once again. I appreciate it. My name is Dr. Alalade at Ask the Gynecologist. And uh, you see... ATG actually has been a wonderful group for me because uh, before ATG started in 2015, when I started it in, by the grace of God, November 15, I never had the opportunity or I never gave myself the opportunity to speak in public. I'm, I'm a stammerer. If you obviously know, I stammer once in a while and uh, I feel I felt shy about it and I never wanted to speak publicly. And uh, when it, I started ATG, I realized that it was easy just to copy and paste and to edit my post but later on facebook came up with a live program and then i you know we started using the live program we did our first atg seminar in september 2015 many people said it, it wouldn't work and that uh, today this is the uh 2017 that's uh, this is the fourth year that we've been doing monthly seminars on atg many people have come and go but god remains ever the same by the grace of god you are still here and we are still here so we started this uh, live program since september 2017 and it's exactly a year today we started this live 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 uh, talk like this on facebook so it's a wonderful thing and um with this live talking, we've been able to uh, uh, explain, expatiate, and expound on the uh, deep things of the women's health, you know, ovulation, infertility, and so on and so forth, and fibroids, ovarian cysts, what happens to dry vagina, and we've been able to reach out to a lot of people. Flora Perfumery, thank you for passing across uh, Dokemo ATG. The ATG IVF Center is at Dokemo, and Flora Perfumery uh, passed at our office today. Thank you, uh, Flora, and thank you for letting me know. I'm happy. You see, so anyway, we started ATG. It was on, an online thing, and over the years, especially this time last year, as uh, Flora Perfumery is saying on, on Instagram, we opened our fresh ATG office, which was a laboratory, and then we opened an IVF center about four months ago. So we are making consistent consistent progress. And tell you something, we opened another branch of ATG laboratories in Suwilere. And maybe one day we'll open on the island and maybe one day we'll open in, in, in Ibadan, in Abuja, in Paragot, and in many states of Nigeria. And that is where we are going. If God wants us to go there, we will not stop. If God says we go, we move. God says take next step, we go through you by you all the time. So ATG has evolved from an online thing to into a physical presence. We have our foot and we have our boots on ground. We are warriors that are not afraid to fight. And ATG has been that thing. That vehicle to give women a voice, to give women opportunity to understand their, how their body works, evidence-based practice, ATG has made that mark 
in Nigeria and we continue to make the mark consistently without fail. See, the things we do in ATG, sometimes they are beyond us, but we take those steps with our small steps, small ideas, God has made it into a big three. Those monster seed of the time past, today is now thing that people will come with. So ATG by, the, by you only and through God, most importantly, we are here and we are going to get better. So tonight, I'll be talking about ectopic pregnancy and how it affects infertility. Most people don't even know what ectopic pregnancy is. So before I continue, I need to grab my uh, uh, womb model. I think I left it somewhere. Mm. Okay, yeah. So I need to grab my womb model here at the back of my whiteboard. So um, for you to know what ectopic pregnancy, you need to understand what the womb of a woman is so we'll be talking about that today so if you've missed any of our programs you can always watch our stuff on youtube we are on twitter we are on instagram live like now on instagram we're on youtube with life like here and we'll keep on doing these things to ensure that people are reached consistently every day to know more about their body and that is what atg is for and if you're trying to get pregnant pregnancy is becoming a tussle a war a battle we are also ready and we've provided an ivf center to cater for people trying to get pregnant and by the grace of god our hope is to welcome at least three ivf patients every day that will make and will turn their lives around and by the grace of god maybe one day we'll be welcoming at least five patients every day if possible all things being equal we have the capacity for that and we are ready to take on that so now this is what a woman's womb lady t she's princess Lix queen thank you thank you so much Lix queen uh Gloria Mwanko, thank you so much, Gloria. So this is what a woman's womb looks like. Everybody passed through that point at some point. We all came through that. And you see ovaries, <clears throat> that white thing, and that ovary is been sliced open on this other side. That's what you see on the inside the ovary. Okay, this is what you see inside the ovary. That is the ovary. Normally, you slice the ovary open, you see that in the in the ovary. And you see two tubes. This one, this tube has been sliced open so you can see what's in the tube. And that is the tube opening there. That is the tube opening there. Okay. So that old tube, we open it and this is what we see in the tube. Okay. Now, once the ovary releases, once the ovary releases the egg, okay, the egg floats in, in, the, in the tummy. But automatically, there's a way that the egg is sent over into the tube. It enters into the tube and it finds its way all the way into the tube and it enters into the womb here. So that is what the, the the egg does on both sides. So it doesn't matter which side or which which ovary releases the egg, any tube is able to pick up the egg. So for example, if you had one tube lost or taken out or excised because of ectopic pregnancy in the past, okay, and you still have your ovaries intact, maybe on the on this side, on that side, and one tube is gone. This one is gone. Even if this ovary releases egg, okay, this leftover tube that is normal can pick up the egg and send there and get pregnant. Many women that have only one tube are able to get pregnant. There are so many women that have had ectopic pregnancy before, they're able to get pregnant because their, their leftover tube is perfect, okay? Now, I want to tell you the things that can cause ectopic pregnancy and how ectopic pregnancy can cause infertility. Now, any pregnancy that is outside the womb cavity is ectopic pregnancy. Whether the pregnancy is inside your cesarean section old scar, whether it's a pregnancy is around your ovary or ovarian ectopic, or in your tube tubal ectopic, or in your tummy abdominal ectopic, any pregnancy that is not in the womb cavity is ectopic pregnancy. Pregnancy, ectopic, ectopic pregnancy, the most common site is in the tube tubal ectopic. <clears throat> now, if you have ectopic pregnancy, your test of pregnancy will be positive, like any pregnancy test, okay? If you have ectopic pregnancy, your test of pregnancy will be positive, whether you do blood or urine. That's number one. Number two, ectopic pregnancy does not have to be in your tube. It can be anywhere as far as it's not inside your womb. Okay, that's number two. Ectopic pregnancy, okay, can miscarry like any normal pregnancy. Some normal pregnancies do miscarry. So the same thing too, ectopic pregnancy can miscarry naturally and is reabsorbed by the body. Okay. Now, what you need to know about ectopic pregnancy is that it does not develop like normal pregnancy. A normal pregnancy stays in the womb. The womb gets bigger to accommodate and accommodate. Most womb that is not pregnant will be this size of my fist. A womb that is fully pregnant, 38 weeks, can be as big as my head. 
so you can see how the womb can hypertrophy and contract back after the baby is gone now ectopic pregnancy because it's in the tube it will grow but it will outgrow the tube because the tube is not designed to stretch like i always say the the tube is like an expressway you can't pack on a high speed expressway you're going to cause accident god forbid now everything that passes the tube must move into the womb if you cause traffic in the tube ectopic pregnancy results and what are the things that can cause traffic in the fallopian tube ectopic pregnancy is pregnancy that anywhere anywhere as far as it's not in your womb is ectopic pregnancy what can make ectopic pregnancy happen now follow me ectopic pregnancy like i said does not grow like a normal pregnancy ectopic pregnancy like i said again does not grow like normal pregnancy because ectopic pregnancy can is not in the womb so it cannot grow properly the tube ovary cervix cesarean section scar in the tummy those areas cannot feed a pregnancy the pregnancy is designed to be housed and to live inside this permanent inside this real estate called the womb that is our home before we came here so what will happen if a pregnancy is in the womb and that is normal it will develop properly and there's a hormone that we test to know whether you're pregnant called the beta hcg hormone this is the same hormone we take in your blood to test for pregnancy is the same hormone the beta hcg hormone is the same hormone we check in your urine to check for pregnancy we call it beta beta hcg okay beta h c g okay let me write it here uh, beta h c g that's the pregnancy hormone okay that pregnancy hormone is the same thing we check in your urine in your blood to see if you're pregnant. The pregnancy hormone beta HCG will double times two times two every 48 hours if the pregnancy is in the womb and is viable. If the pregnancy is not in the womb, is in the tube, the beta HCG will not double every 48 hours because the pregnancy is not in a normal place. It will start to fumble. For example, if the pregnancy is in the womb, normal pregnancy, developing well, beta HCG is 1,000 today. You do it again on Wednesday to be at least 2,000 or more. Okay? Some will say at least more than 66%, 66% or, two or, or double or more every 48 hours. But if the pregnancy is in the tube, it could be pregnancy. Instead of, it, instead of the test doubling every 48 hours from 1,000 to 2,000 or more, it will go to 1,150, 1,120, or it gets 1,008. Then instead of increasing, it will start to plateau. It don't go more than that. In such cases, we do a scan. We see fluid like water in your womb. That could be a sign of ectopic pregnancy. Okay. That is why when people come to me, doctor, they found uh, water fluid in a part of Douglas. What, what, what does it mean? It means nothing. We don't interpret fluid in a part of Douglas isolated, uh, just as an isolated finding. If, for example, you just ovulated and you are around day 14 and I can see fluid in your part of Douglas, test of pregnancy is negative, uh, there's no offensive discharge, that means that that fluid that we see on your scan around the ovulation is just fluid from your ovary that released the egg. When the egg is released from the ovary, okay, there will be some fluid that will flow out too. Those fluid will collect in your part of Douglas. If a woman has a, a, a period, okay, and I can see fluid in a part of Douglas there, Okay, she's not pregnant. There's a period. There's probably fluid from the oh, uh, from the period. Okay, sometimes if a woman has fluid in part of Douglas and I do examination and she has offensive discharge, it's painful in her tummy, she's not pregnant, that could be a sign of infection. I take a swab to check for infection. If I see fluid in the part of Douglas, this person, I can't see pregnancy in the womb. I did, I did test of pregnancy is positive. I did beta HCG is 2000. Yet I can't see pregnancy. It's likely a topic pregnancy that is causing the bleeding. So we don't interpret fluid in the part of Douglas as, as just, and just like that. We have to read it in context to understand. Now, if you open the tube of a woman, this is what you see. So if you slice and cut open a woman's tube, let me show you what you're going to see. So this is a woman's tube. Right. This is a tube. Everybody can see me. This is a tube of a woman. Okay. When you open the tube, okay, this is a tiny. That's a, a tiny uh, 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 outside rim of the tube. Okay. Good. So that's a tiny outside rim. So this is when you open. You cut the tube open. 
this what, what, what you're gonna see okay now when you look into the tube in, into the tube you see some structures that looks like this like hair okay arranged in a circular fashion okay they are everywhere all the way down in the tube okay all the way down like legs of centipede those tiny tiny legs of centipede they are everywhere in the tube what they do is they blow back and forth back and forth to ensure that the egg that is being released in the ovary is moved along all the way into the womb cavity all the way into the womb cavity now these air like structures are very very important they are very important okay they are what very 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 important anything that causes damage to this air like structure the egg can be stuck what can cause damage to them now anything that will cause damage to this tiny tiny black things that move the egg will cause ectopic pregnancy for example if a woman has an infection if you have an infection what happens is that these air like structures they'll have some nets around them okay net like that like cobweb nets okay and in that case that egg it was egg they are a, a bit big they'll be stuck in that uh, cobweb which was formed from an infection okay the egg is stuck the egg can't move but the sperm is very very funny sperm can pass through all those nets and get into the egg so the sperm eats the the the, the egg egg is fertilized but egg can't move egg because it can't move now it starts to grow there's a parable in the bible that says some some seed will fall, fall by the wayside some seed will fall in the in the rock some will fall, fall along the thorns some will fall in solid ground this egg that is stuck in the in in the tube is on the rock it will miscarry it will cause wahala it will cause kasala so this egg is fertilized by sperm because the sperm can navigate and pass through those nets the egg is fertilized it starts to grow and because at some point it will outgrow this tube it will outgrow this tube then it will burst the tube two seconds everything is burst as it bursts the tube okay the woman starts to bleed she starts to bleed, rainfall, bleeding goes into the tummy, she's pale, she's dizzy, she can't stand, she's falling down. You do, you do test of pregnancy, positive, tummy is painful, ectopic pregnancy is there. You do scan, you can't find pregnancy in the womb, you can find a big structure in the tummy. You see blood in the tummy on scan, test of pregnancy is positive. Ectopic pregnancy is there. Some cases it hasn't ruptured, but we catch the, the pregnancy on time. Ectopic pregnancy in the tube, and we give you methotrexate to shrink the ectopic, or we try to open you up to go and take out the ectopic pregnancy. Once you have ectopic pregnancy in your tube, that tube must go. The treatment for ectopic pregnancy in the tube is that we take out that tube. So we cut, so if the ectopic pregnancy is stuck in the tube somewhere there. We cut away that tube, so that tube is now useless. But the ovary is still there. We don't take out the ovary. Mm -hmm. So that tube is gone. But even if you ovulate from this ovary, this tube that is okay can pick the egg. In most cases, if we see that you have a tube pregnancy, we want to ensure that the other tube is okay before we take out this damaged tube. Once a tube pregnancy is in a tube, that tube has to go. Now, remember I said that infections can cause this kind of disturbance and net-like structure like cobwebs in the in the in the womb. What sort of infections? Chlamydia, gonorrhea, bacterial vaginosis in some severe cases, they can cause damage to those tiny, tiny structures that move egg in the womb. If you smoke, it can cause damage to those things. Okay? Some people, they have some genetic disorders too. It affects the structures there and they cannot move egg. Some people, they've had what we call endometriosis. Endometriosis is, is when you see some, some part of the womb cells, they move into the tube and they damage and they clump the tube. We call it so many names. It's 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 stomacal nodosa. Don't worry about that. Basic endometriosis of the tubes can damage the tubes. Some people they have endometriosis. It's only in the womb. Some is on, on on the ovary. Some can be in the tube and they can damage the tube. Okay. How do we know whether your tube is damaged or your tube is okay? The way to do that is do HSG, an X-ray test to check to check to to, to test. To see if there's any blockage in the tubes, we can do um, uh, hysterosonogram mm -hmm. and we can also do laparoscopy and dye test. Laparoscopy and dye test is a big operation. We put it to sleep, put the camera through your belly button, flushing a blue dye into for your vagina above, and the dye will spill into your tummy. 
passing through the tubes on one side and the other side. So we see the, the, the blue dye spilling out of your tube, coming out like that, same thing like that, as far as, as, far as there's no blockage. If there's blockage, it will happen, we know there's damage in the tube. A be pregnancy is an emergency, it can kill. It, I, I gave you a story about a lady from uh, somewhere in, 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 uh, in Europe, came to UK, I think she's from uh, Slovakia. If I remember rightly, and she almost died. She she was found at home by, by her husband collapsed. Nobody even knew she was pregnant because she just missed her period. Collapsed in the house. She was rushed by ambulance to the A and E. Nobody knew what's wrong with her because she was she was almost half dead. She could she speaks poor English. She was unconscious. They did the test of pregnancy after collecting the urine sample. It was positive, and we did a scan and A and E. They called the gynae. We did a scan. There was blood flood flood of blood in her tummy. Could go, go to the theater, intubated, open her up, blood everywhere in the tummy, scoop, scoop, scoop blood out. We saw the tube damage, a three pregnancy, wash everything out. And she was on blood transfusion about six or so units and she was collapsed. We had to put her on dialysis for about a week. She came back live. She had a partial stroke, which she fully recovered from and she's perfectly okay today. That is a three pregnancy. It's an emergency can kill. In places like Nigeria, that woman might, might, might have died. Might have died. She might not have a second chance of life. This woman today, she's, she's had a baby and she's moved on. You can understand when Dr. Esther made a post over the weekend that maternal mortality in Africa, in Nigeria, is very, very bad. One in 22 women would die from childbirth or childbirth related causes. It's unusual in Nigeria. It's unusual in this world. In this day and age, many, 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 many resources have been spent by people all over the world to improve maternal mortality. Despite this in Nigeria, people still die because of childbirth. In fact, once a woman scales through childbirth years in Nigeria, she's more or less likely to live long, all things being equal. The most important part of a woman's, child li a woman's life in this world, in Nigeria, is doing childbirth. That is the most risky, most risky time because a lot of resources has not been spent Spent appropriately to look after women from and to keep them safe due to childbirth related issues. ATG is trying to plug that gap. That is why we talk every day consistently, if possible, and putting posts online on our page to talk about things that save lives, to talk about things that can transform lives. We talk about these things all the time. We even encourage people to sign in for premium services. And people, some people benefit from all this free talk, but some people take it for granted. My sisters, my brothers, if you've seen a woman die from a tubi pregnancy, you will understand what I'm saying. I remember my first day in Ops and Ghana when I was doing as a student in, in Luth. A woman came, they said she had a tubi pregnancy. I couldn't understand what they meant by a tubi pregnancy. A tubi pregnancy, if I've, if it damages your tubi, is a problem. I saw a woman last week, gynecology. This woman's had a baby before in 2005. She last year, July last year, she had a tubi pregnancy in her right tube. That tube was not removed. Yes, we gave a metotrexate injection to shrink a tubi pregnancy. Sometimes you can give a, an injection called metotrexate to shrink a tubi pregnancy. A bit expensive, but it's good. So this woman, I was saying last year or July, was given metotrexate to treat a tubi pregnancy. It was gone. She got pregnant again July this year, but in August, we knew that she had a tubi pregnancy. And at this time, on that same right tube, we have to take it out. So she came to clinic. Oh, doctor, she saw me last week. I had a baby five years ago. It took be pregnancy last year, again, again this year. At this time around, they had to take out the tube. The tube was damaged. That what is my fate? So I told her to be honest. You see, um, uh, Fatima, someone can conceive normally after it be pregnancy. I said at the beginning that if you had a tubi pregnancy before, in most cases, the treatment is to remove the tube. And as far as the other tube that is left alone, left behind, is okay, you can conceive. And I've seen many women that get pregnant <clears throat> after damage to their tube that has been removed from a tubi pregnancy on one side. As far as the other side, it's okay. Even if you ovulate from that side, the perfect tube will pick up the egg. <clears throat> so back to my discussion. So this woman, she's had a tubi pregnancy in the past, the right tube, it could be pregnancy in 2000 during COVID time. Tube was removed. Second ectopic this year. Uh, sorry, first ectopic, we gave her a metatrix set. Second ectopic, tube was removed on that same side. She now came to, uh, to see me. What's my fate? I told her the fact that you had a topic pregnancy before, okay, twice, 
it increases your chance of pregnancy almost 50%. That's the honest truth. If you've had a tubic pregnancy before, any tube, there's a chance that you might have a tubic pregnancy again because history has a way of repeating itself. If you've had a tubic pregnancy before, you are more likely to have a tubic pregnancy than somebody that has never had a tubic pregnancy. If you've had a chlamydia infection before, treated or not, okay, you are at risk of damage to your tubes. If you have another chlamydia infection over and over over again, it increases cumulative damage possibility to your tubes that puts you at risk of ectopic pregnancy. That is why any infection you have, chlamydia or gonorrhea, bacterial vaginosis, any infection you have, you must treat them on time to prevent damage to your tube. So this one came to me. I'm saying, I told her, for the first things first is that you're able to get pregnant before for this same husband, which you're still with, I don't think he has any problem with his semen analysis. He might have problem, but very unlikely. What you need to do, I told the woman, is that we need to do HSG for you to check that that tube that is left behind on your left is okay. So she, she was crying. I, I gave her you know, tissue to clean her eyes. I explained to her, hasn't anybody told you this before? She said, yes, it's true. They told her, I'm like, don't panic. There's nothing God cannot do, but I have to tell you the honest truth. So I went for her to have an HSG. We're going to review her report in the next one month. And if the other tube is okay, there's high chance that she can still conceive herself, that she can still conceive her own, the, you know, through this. So, if you had a tubic pregnancy, all hopes are not lost. Though. Don't panic. You can still get pregnant yourself, but you are at increased risk of a tubic pregnancy again. That is why if someone has had a tubic pregnancy before, if they get pregnant, we tell them, Always come to scan early pregnancy and get a scan done. So my sister, if you're watching me, if you've had a tubic pregnancy before, or if you know anybody that has had a tubic pregnancy before, tell them that anytime they miss their period and they must do test of pregnancy. And if it's positive, they should go and get a scan done. That scan might not see anything. That's okay. Get it done anyway. And if you can't see anything because it's too pregnancy is too small, repeat the scan two weeks afterwards because in most cases, you are at increased risk of having a tubic pregnancy. And if it happens, you want to catch it on time. So if you a woman listen to me, you've had a tubic pregnancy before, or if your friend has had a tubic pregnancy before, tell them this, that as soon as you miss your period and your test of pregnancy is positive, okay? Once you miss your period, do test of pregnancy. And if it's positive, go and register to early pregnancy scan to check that, that pregnancy is in, in is in what in the womb that is not what is not in the tube and if they say the pregnancy they can't see it yet repeat it again 10 or 14 days time and in most cases we'll see it if it's in the womb or tube and we'll know if it's ectopic on time because ectopic pregnancy once it passes six or seven weeks it has propensity and it has possibility of rupturing and busting the tube and once it busts the tube the blood supply to the ovarian ovary ovarian artery also has a, a branch to the fallopian tube that blood supply bleeds like a tap and it can bleed and it can kill a woman within a day or two so always do scan of scan anytime you are pregnant to ensure your pregnancy is not in the tube it's in the womb okay now i said again that ectopic pregnancy does not have to be in the tube it can be anywhere as far as it's not in the womb now let's take some questions but people are already asking questions and they're itchy for their answers so let's go here to a lady that asked a question uh, about a topic i missed that question something thank you guys for your for your kudos i appreciate you all thank you for your encouragement i can see your text here like i said again i'll be talking about ovulation ivf and clomid ivf and clomid and ovulation this saturday it's going to be a wonderful seminar and if you've been having problem with your ovulation it's time to come and change your story there's no way you can change your story from where you are to where you want to be if you don't take action what action should you take first of all register for HD premium services let me consult with you and go through your results to move you from where you are to where you're supposed to be to get pregnant in most cases by attending our seminar most people attend our seminar usually concentrated teaching they are able to change their fortunes and change their story. If you're trying to get pregnant, you don't have to be a woman, woman to, to attend a seminar. You can be a guy. Even if you're a man, you can attend a seminar and you can learn what you need to let your wife know. Or if, if possible, two of you can attend together and you can see, you can learn a lot and you'll be shocked at what you think you know and what you don't know. That seminar I'll be joining down. Arewa, Simisola, I don't care. Thank you from America. I can see you. 
wonderful lady from the United States. Thank you so much. Uh, to subscribe for premium premium services, whether you want to you want me to consult with you over my WhatsApp number, you can use the gold service, the diamond service, the platinum service, or the weekly service, and, and you can get consulted. And if you want to use the antenatal services, it's available on Telegram. You can subscribe for the antenatal service on Telegram, and you can join the GTC on Telegram as well. Okay. Now, there's a question here by Emanuela. At what? I missed that. Too. Uh, at what week can scan detect pregnancy? Emanuela, most scans will detect pregnancy usually from about six weeks onwards. In some cases, from five weeks, scan will pick up. But in most cases, from six weeks onwards, okay? As for Emanuela, Chingwe, Onye. Okay, there's a question here. Uh, thank you, Shadi Gomez. Thank you, Gomez. Thank you, Gomez. God bless you, my sister Gomez. When a scan shows no ovarian lesion, what does it mean? And also, Pat POD, Patrick Douglas is free. You remember I already explained to you about Patrick Douglas, okay? That when they say there's no vegan lesion, that means that there's no cyst, there's no mass, there's no uh, disease that they can see on the ovary for you. And when they say there's nothing in part of Douglas that is free, that is to say there's no fluid, there's nothing suspicious or to give a sign of any disease in your part of Douglas. So that means that your scan is normal, Maggie Inyang. Okay, what are the causes of delay in ovulation? Hormonal imbalance, usually for your prolactin, usually when there's high FSH, when there's a uh, high LH. All this can cause disturbance in your ovulation. If you have abnormal thyroid hormone, it can cause problem with your ovulation. You're in the United States. If you're in the United States, uh, Sidoni, Chefua, you can register. Um, but if you don't have your result, your hormonal profile result, your infertility test result, your ultrasound sperm count, or you're not able to do test, test for me, there's no need to register. If you're going to register in America, in UK, in Europe, in Nigeria, you must be willing to do investigation tests from any reputable lab so I can review. I'm not a magician. I'm not a babalao. I'm a doctor, scientist. So if you're going to register for our services, always ensure that you're able to do investigations. Because you're in America, for example, my sister, Sidoni, I can go through all your results. I can give you my recommendations and, 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 and advice regarding what I see in your results, okay? I can do that for you. So if you want to do that, you can register at the, uh, uh, on, on our links. Our links covers payment anywhere in the world, okay? Good. To register, Tessie Roberts, just follow the link. Can any of our team members, moderators, can you please attend to Tessie Roberts? She wants the link to register for our premium services and she wants the link to register for our ATG seminar. On Instagram here, Bastia Tafalaya, she's saying that, please, doctor, I did IUI on the 1st of September since since. On the 15th, you've been having spotting. What could it be? It could be nothing. It could be your period or it could be a possible miscarriage. The first thing you should do, this is two weeks post IUI, go and do test of pregnancy. If it's positive, that means that you're probably miscarrying. If it's negative, that means you're having a period, okay? Emi Ikatwa, my wonderful sister all the way from Benin, Nigeria. How are you today, Emi? Thank you for being here. Basirat, I hope that answers your question on Instagram here. Yeah. Tessie Roberts is still asking us how can she register. Please somebody attend to Tessie Roberts. What is meaning of secondary oligomenorrhea? Secondary oligomenorrhea means that your period is very scanty. And secondary means that they will found a possible cause of that oligomenorrhea. So your oligomenorrhea, which is a scanty period, has been known to be caused by something particular. Okay, that's all. Dr. Guidi, how many ways can a woman carry pregnancy? Normal pregnancy can you can carry for up to 40 weeks. I've seen people deliver at 37 weeks, 38 weeks, 39 weeks. But if you deliver at 37 weeks vaginally, it's accepted as full term. But ideally, if you're going to deliver, your full pregnancy is full term at 40 weeks. But if you deliver vaginally at, th at 37 weeks, it's not pre term, it's acceptable. Okay, so your pregnancy can last from 37 to 40 weeks, but some people can deliver anytime. Be, be below 37 weeks those are preterm deliveries okay if at 35 the 35 pregnancy is not yet proven something 35 there's no way you can see pregnancy on scan at, 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 at 35 days you can't see it so don't even start pop, uh, popping scan you can't see scan that will show pregnancy of 35 days but if you do a test of, of pregnancy whether blood or urine it, if you're pregnant at, at you, you're pregnant it will show okay after about two weeks post missed period okay but a scan will not be pregnancy at 35, at, at 35 weeks okay 
Whenever you're unusual, good evening. Thank you so much on Instagram there. I can see you. God bless you. Okay. Thank you, EOD Studio Nigeria. You've done all your lab tests. I mean, all is negative. My hobby is done spermogram is good. That's okay. So since you can join our premium services, I'll go through all your results and I'll and I'll get back to you. I can't consult with you openly. You can't share medical information openly in on over one million people here. It's not right. Okay. You can't share your husband's test and husband's spam count and your own results on this general group. It doesn't make too much. You know, it doesn't. It's not good. So if you want consultation with me to go through your result, you can join our premium services. I'll go through your result. Good evening, doctor. Is there any treatment for high FSH and blood tube? If your FSH is high, more than 30, there's no treatment. Don't let anybody lie to you. Okay. Once your FSH is more than 30, on two occasions apart, usually six weeks apart, it's more than 30. That means you're not ovulating anymore. And if the tubes are blocked too, I'll tell you honestly, just and your FSH is high like this, start thinking of IVF with egg donor. That's honest truth. That's honest truth. Tubes are blocked, high FSH. Thinking of IVF with egg donor. Kia, kia without delay. Go to ATD IVF center. Okay. Good evening, doctor. You had a miscarriage in 2019 after you were discharged from the hospital. You had a motorcycle accident and then you... Okay. So, so sad. You had a motorcycle accident after discharge. Uh, so, what you need to do is go back to the drawing board. You had a miscarriage before. So, that means that you're able to get pregnant naturally. Your husband's problem is possibly okay. You're possibly okay with your over you know, overall profile. First things first, my sister. Basira Fulanyo on Instagram, I already answered you. Basira Fulanyo, I already answered you. I took special time and I called out your name and I answered your question. Basira Fulanyo. So watch the Instagram video again here. Your question has been answered. So my sister that had, my sister that you had a miscarriage 2019. You had a motorcycle accident. Unfortunately, God, for, God save us. You need to do all your hormonal profile, including LH, FSH, D21, progesterone, AMH, and all that at ATGIVF Center or any laboratory close to you that is reputable. Do all your hormonal profile results. Let me look at them. Also, if possible, get your husband to do his semen analysis. And let's look at them and start from there. Okay? Favor anointed. What's your question, my sister? What's your question? Let us see your question. Okay? All right. Let us see your question. Thank you, Gloria. Thank you, Christina, for answering favor, favor anointed. Doctor, can 4,000 sperm count make a woman pregnant? 4,000 sperm count? Not 4 million, 4,000. Very unlikely. Very, very unlikely. That, I'm not going to lie to you, my sister. Sperm count 4,000, unlikely to get it, unlikely to get a woman pregnant. That's it. Start thinking of sperm donor. Start. What causes recurrent miscarriage, recurrent infection? Genetic abnormalities, antiphospholipid syndrome, okay, field plasma implantation, high thyroid hormone, they can cause, or low thyroid hormone, they can cause miscarriage, okay. What causes three months pregnancies not to grow exactly? Field implantation, infection, poorly managed di di diabetes, malaria in pregnancy, all this can cause miscarriage at any time. And the middle thickness, seven, seven is, is too small. For getting pregnant or high VF, we want and the meter thickness to be at least 12 millimeter or more. Valerie, unusual. Thank you so much. Sheila Phillips, I've already answered your question. We want the thickness to be at least 12 millimeter or more. Okay? Very good. Brilliant. Thank you, Valerie. Thank you, Valerie. Thank you. So, guys, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I hope to see you again this week. And don't forget to register for the ovulation seminar. Coming up Saturday, Saturday 8 p.m. This Saturday is the ovulation seminar, IVF seminar. We will be talking about clomid, especially how clomid can be used to get you pregnant if you need it. So join me and see you there. Okay, God bless you and have a wonderful week ahead. Bye bye.